With Premiere Pro, we can create closed captions, and that means we can create subtitles which are stored in a different file instead of burnt into the video. And right here, you can see an example of such a separate file. It holds some time codes, but of course, we don't have to write them down ourselves. We can just use Premiere to generate that file, and right here, we have the video. And if I'm going to open up that video, you can see now that the subtitles are playing. And when I'm going to right click on this video here and head over to subtitle, you can see that I either can disable or enable that subtitle track. So this has tons of possibilities, like for example, uses on YouTube, where users then can enable or disable that subtitle track, or also different languages. You can also use this on a DVD, where people then can use their DVD remote to either enable or disable those subtitles. So let's have a look inside Premiere Pro on how we can do that. What's up guys, it's Jordy here for Cinecom.net and sorry for that long intro, but now you know what this tutorial is about. So let's get started right away. We're going to create a new captions file. And to do that, just right click in your project panel and say new item captions and that will prompt you with a message box, just like as you would create a title in Premiere, just press OK. And now we get some more options. First of all, you have the format of the captions and you have uh, two weird things. You got teletext, which is uh, pretty old now, and then you got open captions. But we are going to create closed captions because open captions are baked in into the video. And closed captions means that we are going to export it as a different track so that you are able to uh, enable or disable that inside on uh, YouTube or on DVD or anything like that. And for that, we have to choose one of these two. Now, the difference between the 600 and 700 right here is actually just the possibilities that you have with both of these. And I would always just go for the 708 because this one here has some more language support. You can also uh, do formatting in here. So that means you can style your text. However, not many devices allow that. But anyways, it supports more languages. So I would just always go for that 708. Select that and just press OK. And that will create a new captions file. And if you're going to double click on that, it will open up the captions editor. Now, I believe that Adobe still needs to tweak this feature a bit more. The workflow isn't that great yet. I believe that there are third-party uh, softwares out there that do a bit better job at this. So I'm going to start with giving you a tip on how to make the workflow a bit easier. And that is to start with the first title right here. You can see an in and an out point, And that is actually the length of that text. And we're going to make that first text just the complete length of the timeline. And we can easily do that by just going all the way to the end right here. And look at the time code over here. Just select that, copy that by Control C or Command C on the Mac, and then head back or just click here in the source monitor that will open up the captions again. And we're going to set the out point as well to that same uh, length here. So just paste that in here with Control V or Command V for the Mac users. And now the first text has the length of the total edit, which is of course too long, but it's an easier workflow and you will see in just a minute why. I'm going to head back to my project window and just drag in that caption files above my edit like that. Now you can see it actually has the entire length of my edit. And I'm going to make this a bit bigger right here so that you can also see some more information of where the text is at. Now there is one problem and I'm going to start with that as well. If we are going to play this, you won't see any captions. And that is because we haven't enabled it yet. We are working with closed captions at the moment. And that's why we also have to enable that just as with on YouTube or with a DVD or something. We also have to do that inside Premiere. And the easiest way is to add a new button here in your program monitor. And you can do that by clicking on this plus button and then drag in the, if I find it right here, the closed caption display, which is at the moment not enabled. So just drag that uh, button to your buttons layout right here and press OK and then click on that and that will enable it. But still we don't see anything and that is again a another setting. Now this time we have to go to the menu of the program monitor and uh, we can do that by clicking on this little tool right here that will bring up a bigger menu and locate the closed captions display. And as you can see it's enabled now. This is something that we can uh, put on and off with that button that we've just added. But we also have an option here to go to the settings. Click on that, that will open up a new window. And from here, we're going to select from the standard, the CEA 
708, which is the closed caption uh, format that we've chosen in the beginning. So click on that, then press OK, and now finally we can see our text. So this is already one of the first things Rife finds. So here are already some of the first things Rife finds that Premiere could improve on, because I was searching pretty long to find out these things. Anyways, let's continue. Click again on your source captions right here and head over to your captions tab, and let's edit our subtitles in here. So we are working with someone here who is explaining something about the buildings behind them. It's in Dutch. So we are going to lay some English subtitles on there so all my friends can also know what he is saying. Park 51, that is an apartment gebouw. All right, so that is the first sentence. I'm going to select my captions again here because once I have that selected, we have some more options here. And uh, I'm just going to copy this right here, the time code again, and paste that in here which is the out point for the first text. And you can also visually see that now, that the first text only goes until here, where our play hat is at. And that's great. Right here, he actually says Park 51 is a tower block. There we go, this is the first sentence. And uh, looking great so far. Don't mind too much about the formatting, because like I said before, if you're going to upload this to YouTube, use it on VLC, um, on a DVD, doesn't matter where, they all have their formatting. Then let's create a second caption. You can just do that by clicking on the plus button right here and automatically it will have an endpoint of where the out point is of the previous text. And in the second part, let's listen again what he's saying over there. In this case, 80 apartments. And right now he's saying, in this case, 80 apartments. So I'm going to type that as well. Apartments, there we go. And that's the second sentence. Also here, make sure that we are on the ending somewhere. Copy that time code from your sequence and just paste it in as the out point from your text. And now you can see we have one and two sentences. There's one problem, and this is also a little tip for those of you who do a lot of subtitling. At the moment when I'm going to play this, you will see that one title jumps to another. They are literally against each other. Where, where text number one stops at two seconds, 22, the other one starts at 2 seconds 22. For the viewer, this is not so pleasant because some are earlier done with reading this and then their eyes would go back to the video and they will not get triggered again to read the next sentence because the text doesn't pull that much attention. And that's why I usually want to put a little gap between these two. So for the end point of the second text, I'm just going to let it start a little bit later. Instead of 22, make that 24 or 25 or something. And right now when I'm going to play this, you will see that the text is actually blinking and that will trigger it again for the viewer to look to that point. Pay attention to it as well when you're going to watch a film, whether it's subtitling, you will see that with every line there's always this little gap between and that is just to trigger the viewer to tell them that there is a new sentence that they have to read it again. Alright, so the subtitling is done. Your project would probably be a bit longer than this, so just continue with that plus button and continue making your subtitles. But once you are done, you are ready to export. So just go over to File, Export Media. That will bring up this pop-up and from here we see several tabs, video, audio, etc. and also captions. And it's right here, you have to select how we would like to export those captions. And you either have the option to create a sidecar file, which is that SRT file, which I showed you in the beginning, but also you have the option to burn those captions into the video, because that will also allow you to import a closed captions file and just burn that into the video just by using Premiere Pro. So you won't need any third party software for that. But in this case, let's just create that sidecar file. And here you can also choose then the format of that file. And usually you want to go for subrep subtitle format, which is the .srt, which is the most used. It works on YouTube. It works as well on DVD, etc. So select that. And well, this is basically it. Then just press export. And it will start exporting your video. And when we are going to have a look back at our project, right here, we can find interview and also that CRT file is over there. So when we are going to play that video, you will see the subtitles being there. And of course, we can also disable that track like so, and now we don't see the subtitles anymore. So that's how we can create subtitles as a closed caption inside Premiere Pro. If you have any more questions about these, then definitely pop them in the comments below. And as always, stay creative.